Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds. Welcome to Ape's video notes for topic 8.10, which will cover waste reduction methods. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe changes to the current practices of waste disposal that could reduce the total amount of waste produced and disposed of. And the skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video will involve calculating a mathematical problem using proper units. So we'll start out today by talking about the three R's of waste reduction, that's reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, and so it's important that we note that reduce, reuse, recycle are in this order because this is the order in which we have the most sustainable response to waste production or to you know, usage of goods. So reducing is the best thing we can do. And that's because it's going to reduce the energy inputs required to create, produce, ship, market, uh, new things, new goods. Um, and so again, this could be something like using a metal water bottle, something that's reusable, use it over and over again so that you don't use as much plastic. You reduce your plastic consumption. Another example is riding your bike. This is probably my favorite reduction method. So you reduce the amount of gasoline you use by replacing car transit or bus transit with a bike. Reusing is the next best of the three R's, and by best I mean most sustainable, and that's because you are reusing a product with no new energy investment. So you don't have to input new electricity or input new raw materials to recycle or reuse that product. You're just directly reusing it without any kind of additional energy input. So you could wash, you know, your plastic takeout, you know, containers, reuse those. You could reuse old wood pallets instead of throwing them away, use them for furniture. And so buying secondhand clothing is another example of this. But again, you're just reusing it directly as it is. No new energy input. Then recycling is the last of the three R's. That's because it's the least sustainable. So recycling is this idea that we can take and process old solid waste and convert it into raw materials for new products. Why is it the last of the third R's? Well, it still takes energy input. And so we need to know that uh, there are some drawbacks to it. So again, it's still going to require new energy input. We'll take a look here at some examples. Those would be things like turning glass back into glass this is called closed loop because the initial waste product, glass, becomes glass again. And then we have open loop where the waste product, in this case, plastic water bottles or plastic pop bottles, are going to be turned into a new product and that is a synthetic fiber-based jacket here. And so it can be used to create nylon, that can create the jacket. And so we call it open loop because the initial product, plastic, can create a new product, uh, in this case, synthetic fiber. And then again, as I mentioned already, uh, recycling is the third of the three R's because it's the least sustainable. It still requires considerable electricity input oftentimes, other raw materials may be needed, it needs to be shipped, processed, sorted, packaged, and so there's a lot of inputs. It is better than throwing something away. Certainly it does reduce energy use and raw material use, but it's the last of the three R's and it should be your last resort uh, when it comes to your waste. Now we'll take a look more specifically at some of the pros and cons of recycling. So two of the main advantages here is it's going to reduce demand for new materials and it's going to conserve landfill space because less is being thrown away. Um, so especially products like metals and woods, uh, which cause habitat destruction and soil erosion when they're harvested, recycling these products is just especially beneficial from an environmental standpoint. And so again, it's going to reduce not only the need to harvest these products, but the needs to ship these raw materials and to produce new products. You don't have to burn as much fossil fuel to ship them. Uh, you don't have to create as much plastic packaging. So I like this graphic here because it gives us five ways that recycling reduces energy. And so we have the extraction, we have to do less extraction of resources. We have the manufacturer, we have to put less energy into the manufacturer process. Um, we have less distribution cost. We have less consumption cost because we are, again, consuming products that have been created from old products um, and then less disposal. And so that's another important thing. It conserves landfill space. So we can use our landfills for longer. We can avoid creating new landfills, displacing new habitat because of that when we reduce and uh, recycle to reuse uh, components here, reducing the demand for new components. Um, jump the gun on that first R instead of the third. So cons of recycling, what are some of the drawbacks? It is costly and it requires significant energy input. So again, when we look at the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, recycle comes last because of this. Better than throwing things away, 
not as good as reducing demand in the first place. Uh, and so cities or municipalities, which are usually in charge of recycling, they need to process, they need to sort, they need to package, and most importantly, they need to find someone to actually buy the recycled materials. Um, so this is a great question, like what happens when you actually put your milk carton in the recycling? Well, your city who handles your recycled materials has to find a vendor to buy that and to repurpose it and produce new materials. Oftentimes we produce recycling at a rate faster than it can actually be sold to vendors. So it just gets thrown away a lot of the time, especially when there are changes in the ability of China to take a lot of this recycled material. So it's not quite as simply as, uh, it's not quite as simple as putting it in the recycling and forgetting about it and it just magically becoming something new. Another thing is that it's really important to clean out your recycling. Um, so this falls a little more into the PSA category than the Apes Notes category, but uh, clean your recycling out. It's really important for cities to have clean recycled materials. Oftentimes it ruins the whole batch of recycled goods or recycled materials if uh, we're not cleaning them out, if there's food waste or other residue that can't enable them to be recycled. Now we'll take a look at a neat waste reduction method called composting. So composting is something that can be done with most organic matter. So food scraps, paper, and yard waste. And if you think back to video 8.9, you'll remember that almost two thirds of what we end up producing as waste is compostable, it is organic. And so this is a great solution um, that could be more widely adopted to really rein in our waste production. And the process of composting is basically decomposition under controlled conditions. So we're going to create a giant pile of organic uh, waste and we're gonna allow bacteria or microbes to break it down using decomposition. One big benefit is it reduces landfill volume and at the same time produces a nice product which is rich, you know, compostable material that can be used to enrich soil. And so again, in addition to a nice product, we reduce landfill volumes. So this is really great because companies can sell it. So it gives people an incentivize. Uh, an incentive to use it as a waste reduction method. And so it could be a really profitable business. Another thing to know is that it's gonna reduce the amount of methane that's actually released from landfills. And that's because we are decomposing these organics, you know, in aerobic conditions. It's gonna produce some CO2, um, it may produce some smells, but if it's done properly, it can really be a viable way to reduce waste. Um, so take a look here at this idea of mixing the proper components. Again, this goes a little deeper than we'd need to know for the exam, but it's important to point out that you do want a mix of browns or carbon sources and greens or nitrogen sources. And it just reminds us that organic materials are largely composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, um, and some nitrogen, and that's going to lead them to be really ideal for decomposition. So again, those bacteria are going to use up oxygen and decompose this waste. So let's take a look at an industrial scale kind of mechanism here that could be used for composting. Uh, we have a picture of three common items that could be composted. that would be newspaper, leaves or yard waste, and then food scraps. So they're gonna be collected by some sort of truck. They're gonna be taken for grinding. That just reduces their surface area. And then they're kind of sorted out so that we're composting like materials. We can control the conditions and really make sure that they're ideal. Then there's gonna be some mixing. The mixing is really important to get some oxygen into the equation because the bacteria need oxygen. Again, that's why we're doing this in open conditions instead of underground in a landfill. Uh, and then you're gonna have basically just bays and piles. And again, the key is that you're gonna have some rotating and some mixing so that you get airflow that those microbes need to decompose this organic waste. Um, and if we take a look here at some drawbacks, we do need to be aware of the fact that it can smell Again, this shouldn't be an issue if it's rotated properly and if it's mixed, but it's something that is possible, um, as well as the fact that it can draw rodents or could draw other you know, vermin or pests that could be looking for you know, a free snack. And so um, some great benefits, but some drawbacks we need to be aware of as well. Next, we'll talk about e-waste. So remember, e-waste is just waste that comes from electronics. These could be things like phones and computers or tablets. And the reason that they are so important to consider and so important to manage properly is the heavy metals that they contain. These are things like lead, mercury, and cadmium. Um, these can be endocrine disruptors. They can be neurotoxicants, so they can harm humans. They can contaminate groundwater if these metals are leaching through the soil into the groundwater. And so really important, again, to manage them properly. If they're just put in a landfill or an open dump, that can, again, lead to this leaching of toxic metals. So a super critical class of waste to properly handle. Now, how should they be handled? 
Oftentimes developed nations will collect these in facilities specially designed to dismantle them with workers wearing you know, proper materials that protect them from these hazardous metals. But oftentimes developed nations will instead send them to developing nations where there are fewer uh, environmental protection laws and fewer worker protection laws. So this is certainly an example of environmental injustice. There is exploitation of cheap labor and lax environmental laws oftentimes in these developing nations. So we can see that they will be essentially sold to these nations um, where companies will hire out very cheap labor and again, kind of exploit the people's lack of either awareness about these health conditions or options. Um, and so properly, if there is safety taken into account and the workers have the right materials, they can be dismantled and they should be recycled. So we can take them apart and they can be sold to countries that will then take the valuable metals out. Gold, silver, platinum would be great examples um, from the motherboards or from the other components, and they can be reused. But again, this is kind of a case of what's the ideal situation versus what happens in reality. In reality, they are often sold to less developed nations where the workers are exploited, taken advantage of, um, and they're extracting these metals that are reused, or they just kind of pile up in these developing nations and then are burned or dumped. And so that is going to lead to these toxic metals making it into ecosystems. And finally, we'll wrap up today by talking about waste to energy systems. So waste can be incinerated or burned, and this is going to do two things. One, it's going to reduce the volume. Um, so even if you don't have a waste to energy system, you can reduce the volume of waste by burning it. But two, you can actually turn waste into electricity. And this is because most trash or most waste is highly combustible. It's paper, plastic, and food, which is primarily hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So very combustible if you increase the temperature and get the fire going. Um, so if we take a look here, it's going to be the same process as if we just burn coal or natural gas or biomass. Um, and most of it's even the same process as just any thermal power plant. Uh, and so we're going to burn the trash. We're going to create heat. That heat is going to turn water into steam. Steam's going to spin this turbine. That turbine is going to power the generator. The generator is going to power electricity. So we covered this thoroughly in Unit 6. I hope this is very familiar to you now. Heat water, steam, turbine, generator, electricity. That's the sequence that we have to have down. So it appears again here when we're burning trash. We can also harvest the methane gas that's produced in landfills due to the anaerobic decomposition. So again, think about the open air conditions of composting, that's going to be mostly aerobic decomposition, but down in a landfill where there's not a lot of oxygen, where there's not the right moisture conditions, there's going to be more anaerobic decomposition. So it's gonna be producing methane. Now we have a methane collection system we can see here in the diagram. There's a system of pipes. Those pipes are going down into the ground and then they are piping that basically into a natural gas fired power plant. Um, so you can see here, it's the same process. That natural gas is burned. That heat that's released turns uh, water into steam. That steam spins a turbine. That turbine powers a generator and you have electricity. So again, it's the same idea as burning trash. Similarly, it reduces landfill volume. So it's going to take some of that gas out, which will reduce the landfill volume, not nearly as much as actually burning trash uh, because you know there's not nearly as much decomposition in a landfill as would be ideal because the conditions aren't right oftentimes, but it does reduce the volume to some extent. And then also it's gonna allow a production of electricity that doesn't necessitate new fracking or new mining of fossil fuels. And so even though there's gonna be some greenhouse gas release, um, it is beneficial from the standpoint that it reduces the demand for fracking or for new natural gas exploration. So for practice FRQ 8.10 today, we're going to try this calculation-based FRQ. So we have approximately 30 million mobile devices sold in 1998 in the United States, and that number increased to 180 million in 2007. So two problems here. The first is to calculate the percent increase in mobile device sales from 98 to 2007. The second is to calculate how much gold would be used in the production of phones in 2007 if each device uses an average of 0.03 grams.